Friends and family, good morning and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church. Welcome to our Mass today. Today is a special day. We celebrate the solemnity of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist. A man was sent from God whose name was John. He came to testify to the light, to prepare a people fit for the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Coming together as God's family, we call to mind our sins and our failures, and we ask God to grant us pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From, from my mother's womb, he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing, uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. O Lord, you have probed me, you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. Truly you have formed in my, my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. My soul also you knew full well, nor was my frame unknown to you when I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God raised up David as king, 
of him God testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You, child, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There's no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his, his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, Blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. Dear friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. In the culture of the Israelites, the name of a child is very significant. At times, we find God himself changing the name of a person. He changed the name Abram to Abraham, of Sarai to Sarah, and of Jacob to Israel. At other times, we see God himself giving the name of the child before birth. Such is the case with both John and Jesus. Our gospel today has to do with a family argument over the name which was to be given to the child of Zechariah and Elizabeth. Remember when Gabriel informed Zechariah that he and his wife would have a child in their old age, the first thing he did was to instruct Zechariah as to what the child's name would be. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you will give him the name John. And you find this in the Gospel of Luke. But why would Luke bother to include the account of a family argument over the name of a child. Notice that both parties were strongly insistent on their own suggestions. The crowd was insisting that Zechariah must be the name of the child, but Elizabeth was equally persistent that John must be the name of the child. In fact, these two parties were locked down in their argument and nobody wanted to surrender. We realized that their suggestions really reflected the prevailing mentalities at the time, naming the child after Zechariah would have meant for John, for, for, for this child, to walk in the footsteps of his father. He would have to carry on the father's name. The little child would grow up to be a priest like Zechariah, like his father. On the other hand, for the child to be named by another name would imply the opposite. John would not follow in the footsteps or the child would not follow 
in the footsteps of the father. He would not learn what his father did. He would not be a priest. For Elizabeth, the child should not become a little Zechariah, but the child must be like God, to follow in the footsteps of the Lord, to become a human reflection of God Most High. For Elizabeth, she and Zechariah may be the human parents of the child, but ultimately, God is the father of the child. For the child is not only their child, but the child is indeed God's child. Obviously, this should make sense to not only uh, every mother and father who are listening to us today, but to all of us, to look at human life as a gift from God. In, our, in all our desires and plans for every human life must always be a reflection of the will of God, including our own human lives. Our psalm today is so beautiful. I praise you, Lord, for I am wonderfully made. Yes, you are wonderfully made by the Lord. So also live a wonderful life. Be wonderful in your actions, in your words, in your daily decisions. Speak the words that is of praise to the Lord. That is wonderful. And you become indeed a human reflection of our Lord. Amen. We now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers of petitions to our gracious and merciful God that the church may grow in perfection and love for God through the Holy Spirit's gift of piety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations may be guided by God, who alone is just and merciful, in serving those who elected them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer in doubt and despair may be relieved of their burdens through the gracious mercy of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God may strengthen each one of us in our faith as we seek to live out our vocations as disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may find peace with God at the eternal banquet in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now in the silence of our hearts, we offer to the Lord our prayers and our petitions. Lord God, listen to the prayers of your people and answer them in your goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. And so pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed him out when he came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory. For you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb, he leaped for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption. And to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized a very author of baptism and was priv privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alberto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Now with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, what a Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we all dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, my dear friends, Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Through the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will visit us. Let us pray. Having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly Lamb, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know, as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming, John foretold, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless and keep you and your loved ones in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Proclaim Jesus to the world. Thanks be to God.